If you're watching this video, you probably also own one of these Sonoff security cameras. And while they're pretty nice and pretty cheap, we've discovered some nasty little things in the firmware so far. And I will not go into detail here because I'll link a GitHub repo down below in the video description where you can basically explore all the dumps I make from this thing uh, for yourself and just maybe even port Tasmoda if uh, someone can somehow modify it to work on security cameras too. I'll modify this thing so I have a serial output because so far they're pretty nice and easy to modify. Uh, I've already done it with another camera which you can see here. Oops, I almost dropped it. <laughs> uh, and I've clipped a few plastic packs off here from the vent holes and just routed the cables through so I can get a serial connection to my computer and I've already dumped the partitions. But here's the catch. Even though I dumped them after I factory resetted this thing, there's still some personal informations on there which I really don't want in the GitHub repo. And yeah, I've discovered this actually after I've uploaded them, so yeah, it's it's not really great, but that's why I mentioned the nasty stuff that we discovered. But that's by far not the worst thing we've discovered. And yeah, if we get further in this thing, we'll probably uh, mention this in the GitHub repo too. But yeah, let's actually get on with modifying this thing. And first is of course the unboxing, which is pretty quick because there's not much in here. There's basically just the camera and a plastic bag and that's it. I mean, there are a few other things, but it's not important for this video. So please turn it off, but I will not turn it off because I still need a little bit of protection because I have to lay it like this and I would else scratch the sensor. In order to open this thing you need a pretty long screwdriver because those uh, screws under the feet here are pretty hidden. I'm happy to have one of those, like this, and first of all you need to remove the feet, which is pretty easy. Just pull them away like this, you won't hurt them actually. probably easier with a flathead screwdriver, but after we've done this, we can already start to unscrew the camera. There we go. And once you've done this, it will open up pretty easily. You don't even have to pull on it very heavily. And as you can see, everything is pretty simple in here. There's one motor here and one motor in the top here, I think somewhere here or here. And yeah, it's actually pretty simple. So all you have to do is to remove a little bit of goop here from those serial headers here. And if you're wondering in what order they are, I can show you that too. So basically the square one, which you can see, I can barely see here. <laughs> I'm only working with the screen right now. So there's a square one, which is actually TX. Then there's the next one, which is ground, then there's RX, and then there's 3 volt. So, I hope that it was in shot right now. So basically, starting from the square one, it's TX, and if you're going to my GitHub repo, you will uh, see a very easy to understand picture. It's from the back side though, but just flip it around and you'll know what I mean. So, yeah. Basically, it's just soldering time now, so you can put a camera like this. And it will stay, and I will just focus down on those contacts here. There we go. Yeah, I mean, it's not pretty big, but uh, I will tell it again. Uh, this is TX, the square one is TX, then there's ground, RX, and 3 volt. So, if you just sold the wires to this, uh, you can get a serial output now. Oh, and before I forget to mention it, you have to remove this goop a little bit here because it will interfere. So, just scratch it a little bit away here. There we go, and this should be it. And now you can solder. Thank you. 
which is a little hard now because the connector is in the way. But it should be working too. There we go. Give it a little tug just to see if everything's connected. There we go. So, now you can actually start to debug this thing and dump your own partitions. In order to connect the camera, I would suggest using the original AC adapter because even though you can run this thing on 3.3 volts, uh, this cheap little adapter that I got on Amazon for like five bucks went really hot. So I would not recommend using this to power the camera up itself too. Uh, the motors would probably not power up either way. So just connect this one, but do not connect the 3.3 volt wire, only the ground one and the RX and TX pins in order to interface with the camera now. So, as I said, the red wire is the 3.3 volt. And if we take a look here, because uh, th that's the back side of the board here. So, if we take a look, the 3.3 volt is this pin, the RX pin is this, the ground is this, and the TX is the square one. And if we take a uh, look at the front, just uh, switch them around, so 3.3 volt, then there's the RX pin here, ground and TX. So let's start with the square one, which is the violet one. And this is, let me just check again, that's the TX pin. So this goes on the RX on your adapter. Then there's the ground, which goes to ground on the adapter. And then there's the TX pin which goes to, oh sorry, the RX pin which goes to TX. There we go. And once this that's connected, we go back to our dashboard here. And as you can see, there's a f there are a few garbage characters, but we can just clear them again. Uh, sorry, clear screen. And once we connect the mains now, you have to be quick. You have to press enter as soon as you see an output here. There we go, and enter. So. You are now in the U-Boot uh, configuration screen and you can view stuff. Uh, I will actually not do that right now because I don't see the few garbage characters still. Um, I will not do print env because there's the MAC address in there and this is my test camera. This is my full setup here, which I will actually use after I've modded it completely. And if you want to boot it, you can do this command, which is also uh, linked in the GitHub repo. So let's copy this. And I have to copy a few lines at a time because this is this cheap USB serial adapter would drop some characters else. So if I do this right now, there we go, and press enter. And if I say boot right now, it will boot up for the very first time and even though everything's blurred out here, I've given a text log file of the boot, uh, boot screen, uh, the normal boot screen actually, not this modified one, in the GitHub repo. So you can take a look there if you need some infos, but basically we're done so far. And if we go to, yeah, there are a few comments not uh, yet implemented because we haven't actually done all the mounting scripts, which you can do in the following order. Uh, SquashFS in it first. So I have to copy all of this. I'm not sure if everything's needed. I'm not a Linux expert at all. So let's go scream at me if I do something wrong. You have to uh, leave out the Linux RC comment uh, down below because this will actually start uh, the boot up process of the application and you cannot log in once the boot up is done. So the root is does not have a password, but passwordless logins are disabled. So this is a little bit of a counterintuitive measure to actually secure this thing. <laughs> so the next thing is the RC sys in it. There we go. Let's copy this too. I can actually copy the comment, uh, comments too, because it doesn't matter. The next thing would be in it. And you can, by the way, you can get all these files uh, if you just use binwalk on the dumps I've provided here. So those are all in the files there. Let's go, uh, I, f I forgot what, in it, yeah. So let's do all of these comments again. Or let's do all of them because I haven't done them yet. <laughs> And let's go to boot sh now. 
which is here and let's copy all of those, yes, the upgrade, I don't care for that because it should not do it oh, I got a quail panic, okay Why did I get a kernel panic? Maybe it's because I've never booted this camera actually. So this may not work for yours. So let's unplug it and let's plug it back in. There we go. And let's try this again. I will skip over that part because it's boring. <laughs> okay, we're back at boot SH and I will not run every comment here. So let's do these ones and let's do this one. Okay. Oh, maybe the exit comment got it confused somehow, but this would be kind of stupid. Um, anyway, so this one and the GM license one. There we go. CH mod, and you don't need the net update one. And let's go to app sh, and there are a lot of things in here, so I have to manually run them because if I would run the whole application, it would just start into the camera application. You can't log in after this anymore, so don't run them. Just do it manually. It's it's a little bit of work, but it's not really that hard to do. And as I said, I'm not sure if you need everything that I do here, but once you do, you should get a little pop sound from the speaker. Okay, I don't need to do that, because there's no SD card in here. Uh, I also don't want to do that. Uh, it, it just defines which CPU uh, it should, uh, what CPU is inside of this thing for the application to use later on. But those are all the drivers, and once around this, you will hear a little sound from the speaker. It's just activating the speaker, so there's there's no real beep sound or anything. But if you listen closely, I'll bring the microphone a little closer now. There we go. You should have heard the little plug sound there. So now it's active. And the LEDs are still not on, though, because we haven't loaded that driver yet. Uh, there's a little check sensor which I will also run. Oh, I've got a character here. And yeah, the next thing is I know that for a fact that in this camera there's a 2053 sensor in here, so I'll just run this one. And if you wonder if you're wondering how to get that, you can run the sensor type thing here, or you can just run the comment in the sensor type and you'll get the 253 here. So, the next thing to do is to load the user drivers, which are located a little further down here. There we go, ins mod. And now the LEDs should light up, which they do. As you can see, the LEDs are lit up. I'm not sure if it shows up on camera. A tiny little bit, but it should work. <laughs> Just trust me. And I don't think you need to run anything else here. Nope. That should be it. So now you have a fully functioning camera and... Or at least I hope so, because as I said, I'm not a Linux expert at all. And... Yeah. Now you can dump the partitions and everything. And I will actually use an SD card here, if I still have one. There we go, a completely fresh one. And I will now dump the partitions again. And this time, those are completely virgin partitions, <laughs> without any data, which I may have accidentally left on those. But yeah, just keep in mind, if you factory reset this thing, there will still be a little bit of your information left on this. So, do not trust the factory reset procedure. And if I plug it in right now, you will see that it comes up as MMC block zero, and we can mount this with the comment which is an SD card upgrade. We just basically make an SD card folder in the var folder and mount your SD card to it. So now it's mounted and we can, can go to var SD card. There should be nothing on here. And let's just make a uh, directory which I shall call virgin dump. And let's make some 
dumps of those MTD block devices. So we can further analyze them, which is simply done with dd input file def and MTD block. Uh, let's start with one, even though it's not listed here. I will just dump them for uh, basically just to be on the safe side. And let's choose the output device, which is var sd current plus version dump. I think I called it right. Yeah, version dump and MTD block one. And actually, forgot to do the same with the zero. There we go. Let's do the two one. Two. Let's do three. Three. Four, four, five. If there's even a five, I'm not sure. There is a five, so let's see. Oh, ls uh, def. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there are only five, and let's also do the same with def root. It's probably not needed, but as said, just to be sure. And I think my camera battery is actually dying right now. <laughs> Effort, oops, I made a little bit of a mistake here. Death row. Oh, I'm stupid. Let's call off. What, what's it calling? Oh, definitely like this. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Death row. There we go. Now we've dumped all the partitions uh, from my completely virgin son of camera. And I'm pretty thrilled to see if there's any data left behind from the developers of this camera. Um, I'm not sure if it was actually son of because so many things we found in the firmware points to an outside company actually de developing this camera and the software for son of and working on the camera in general for them. And I don't think that son of would release such a really cheap feeling device because the plastic here is, it's not the nicest, it works and it should work as an indoor security camera. The sensor is somewhat nice, um, but the original RTSP stream this camera gives off is completely garbage. There's, there's so such big blocks, you can basically not do a really good uh, motion detection on your uh, Blue Iris setup as example or any other NVR setup. So yeah, this is how you make a dump, uh, how you modify the camera and how you take it apart uh, in the reverse order actually. <laughs> and I hope you can get started with modifying this camera and make a cloudless application for it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, leave a like. If you really super like this video, leave a subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day.